Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready, because the Lord is coming one day. Welcome to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is report number 240. My name is Daniel White the third here to remind you that Jesus Christ is coming back soon and that you need to be prepared. This broadcast is not about predictions, nor is it about setting dates, as some unfortunately foolishly have done in the past. However, it is all about getting ready. It is all about preparation. First today, let's look at some signs of his coming in the news. The disciples asked Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, 3, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus Christ then went on to give them and us clear signs that show us when we can begin to expect to see the coming of the Lord and the end of the world as we know it. Now, looking at world events through the lens of the Word of God, let's look at some headlines from today's news that at least point to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. First up today, according to the Guardian, Great Britain's most senior medical advisor has warned the ministers of parliament that the rise in drug-resistant diseases could trigger a national emergency comparable to a catastrophic terrorist attack, pandemic flu, or major coastal flooding. Dame Sally Davies, the chief medical officer, said the threat from infections that are resistant to frontline antibiotics was so serious that the issue should be added to the government's national risk register of civil emergencies. She described an apocalyptic scenario where people would die of routine infections because we have run out of antibiotics. Second today, according to the Voice of America News, British Prime Minister David Cameron has begun a process that could lead to uh, Great Britain's exit from the European Union, a result analysts say could devastate the country's economy. While the free flow of goods and services with the European continent has been a boon more and more Britons see the European Union as an unwelcome infringement on their sovereignty. That has pushed Prime Minister Cameron to promise a renegotiation of Great Britain's ties to the European Union and then a referendum uh, within five years if he is re-elected in the middle of the process. Third today, according to Reuters, France is now saying that there are no signs that Syrian President Bashar al-Assad is about to be overthrown. The uprising against Assad's rule is now almost two years old. 60,000 Syrians have been killed and another 650,000 are now refugees abroad. France, a former colonial ruler of Syria, has been one of the most vocal backers of the rebels trying to topple Assad and was the first to recognize the opposition coalition. Now the country's foreign minister is saying that there are no positive signs that the end is nearing. Ladies and gentlemen, I love this verse. Please listen carefully. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37, For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not 
tarry. So just hold on. You can read these stories in more detail and get more Second Coming related news on our website at secondcomingherald.com. Now it is time for Prophecy Boot Camp. Prophecy Boot Camp is where we deal with the basics of prophecy, the second coming of Christ, and what will happen in the future according to the Bible. Our aim here is not to make predictions, but to help you get prepared by understanding how things will unfold in the end times. Ladies and gentlemen, our topic for today is titled The Southern Army, Part 1 from Dr. John MacArthur's book, The Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Toward the end of the tribulation, he says, the great army of the South mobilizes its forces and begins to move against Israel. Now, I believe the army of the South is Egypt and the Arab states for more than 3,000 years before the birth of Christ. Egypt was one of the greatest civilizations in the world. It sank into relative obscurity, but in modern times, it has become more and more powerful. In Daniel 11.40 is a simple phrase, And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him the Antichrist. This verse definitely tells us when the king of the South is going to attack. In order to know who the King of the South refers to, it's important to realize that the King of the South is mentioned ten times in this chapter. The first seven references are historical references to seven different kings of Egypt. So it would seem appropriate to conclude that the last three references to the king of the south refer to the one Egyptian king yet to come. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, let's consider what God wants you and I to do in light of his second coming, because he will come back. Don't you worry. Jesus Christ said in Luke 19, 13, to occupy till I come. Please listen to the following from Charles H. Spurgeon on how to Uh, remain confident and hopeful in the Lord's return. He said, There is a resurrection from among the dead to which the Apostle Paul labored to attain. We shall all rise, but the righteous shall rise a thousand years before the ungodly. Uh, There is to be that interval of time between the one and the other. Whether that is the millennial glory or not, I will not say. But this is the main point. The Lord shall come. We know not when we are to expect his coming. We are not to lay down as absolutely fixed any definite prediction or circumstance that would allow us to go to sleep until that prediction was fulfilled or that circumstance was apparent. I like that. Holy Father God, we thank you for what our ears have heard and our hearts have felt and uh, what our spirits were moved by today. Lord, I pray that these short messages uh, would encourage people to get their hearts and minds upon you and your second coming and that they would take it and start living for you in the way that they should. Lord, we pray that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit and help us to stand for you in these wicked and evil and perilous days in which we live. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, before I leave you today, uh, if you're listening to this broadcast anywhere in the world and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I'm here to tell you that God wants you to receive Jesus Christ before he returns. Please understand with me that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. Don't feel too bad, I am too. And I have broken God's laws as well and so has everyone in the world. 
The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Please also understand with me that because of your sins, you deserve eternal punishment in hell. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. This is both physical death and spiritual death in hell. Now, that is the bad news. But here is the good news. John 3.16 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This verse is telling us that despite our sinfulness, God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer and die on the cross for our sins. After he died on the cross for our sins, he was buried and rose again by the power of God. Now all you have to do is believe in him, trust in him, and have faith in him for your salvation. And be willing to repent of your sins, turn away from your old life, and trust Christ. If you do so, you will not suffer eternal punishment in hell, but rather you will live eternally in heaven with God. Dear friend, the Bible also says in Romans 10, 9 and 13, that if thou or you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Dear friend of mine, if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again, and you want to invite him into your heart today, please pray this simple prayer after me and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done some evil things in my life. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me was buried and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today. Help me to repent of my sins and turn from my evil ways and to be the Christian that you want me to be. Amen. Dear friend, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you believed on him for your salvation and you prayed that prayer, and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the word of God, you are now saved and you are on your way to heaven. Welcome to the family of God. I want to congratulate you on receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, go to gospellightsociety.com and read what to do after you enter through the door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me of any man enter in. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, 42. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Matthew 24, 44 says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Now let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator when he prayed, Even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you. Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready. Because the Lord is coming one day.